He said, God gives you power to eat it. So there is the second level to the gift of prosperity is when you have power to eat it. You can have a gift of wealth and riches, but God might not give you power to eat it. It's important to understand that there are some people who have food, but they don't have appetite for the food. They have food, but they can't eat the food. There are some too who have the food, when they eat it, they feel sick. Every food that goes inside them, they'll be running. So, you see how that they don't have power to eat the food. God gives you food, but he doesn't give you power to eat it. Isn't that very painful? Mm -hmm. That you have the food, but you don't have power to eat it. There are some that have money. They don't have power to spend the money. They are on the sick bed. That is not God's gift of prosperity. I heard of a rich man who cannot touch money with his hand because of the money ritual he did. There is something that he was supposed to perform. He did not finish. He did not complete the rituals. But the money has come anyway. But he can't touch money with his hand. Even if he should touch one city, he will feel sick. Because he's using the ritual money. And you know why it is so? Because there is a curse. Because it's from Satan. It's not from God. You see, this guy has the money. He can't touch money with his hand. So what he does is that he has so many workers. He always has somebody who follows him with a briefcase full of money. You see, he can go to the bank with the person holding the money. They put the money there. He can go and withdraw money with somebody following him who will hold him all the money. If you want to give him money, he will tell the person, put your hand into the bag and give him 100,000, give him this. But he himself does not touch money. He doesn't put money in his pocket. He's always free of handling the money. If he touch the money, he will always feel sick. So it's not a gift of prosperity. That is when money becomes a curse. When money becomes a curse is when money brings sickness, pain, oppression, disaster to people. It becomes a curse rather than a blessing. That is not God. That's not the will of God. That's not the plan of God. God wants to give us the gift of prosperity. It is part of the glory of God. As a child of God, God can bless you to prosper. Amen. But you must enjoy the money with a sound mind in a sound body. Sound mind in a sound body. Some people have money, but the money is always demanding the blood of their relatives. A brother will die, a sister will die, father will die, mother will die, wife will die, husband will die, children will die because of the money. There is always a demand for blood. So we see that Satan has managed to bring a cash to the person with the money. And he's taking blood, blood, blood. People do not know that there is a gift of prosperity from God. That is why they cannot wait on God for that gift. But we study in the Bible that all the people of God who serve God wholeheartedly, all those who relied on Him, gave their heart to God and obeyed Him, God made sure that they prospered. Amen. That is the gift. So, power to eat is very important. Power to eat. Okay? Power to eat the, the, the prosperity. Power to enjoy the prosperity. Because not everybody has power to eat it. There are some people, they will struggle and struggle, they will build houses, they will raise companies, they will not even enjoy it, they will die and leave everything, they will die at a very tender age. When I went to Nigeria, I saw some nice ultra modern glass building. The building was so big, and it was all glass, glass building. And then they told me that a guy who built a house was just 32 years old. 
when you build that kind of house. And the building is not one building, no, it's a building of offices. It's, a, it's even bigger than the city house in Ghana. A building of offices that can have about maybe 50 or more offices. It's a story building, so huge and large. It's not just a, a house, you know, somebody's duplex or residence. No. You build it for offices and other things. But when you finish building, the moment you finish building, he died. This is not the gift of prosperity. You just fill the building a house. You want to use it for business and enjoy the blessing of it. And then all of a sudden, you die and you leave everything behind. What do you have? You know, we need to understand the gift of prosperity that comes from God. It also have long life attached to it. Hallelujah. Amen. That's the part we eat it. It's long life. You see, if you don't have long life, what is the point in getting so much of wealth? Then you die, and then you leave everything behind if you don't have long life. So in Psalm 91, verse 16, the Bible says, With long life will I satisfy him, and I will show him my salvation. So there is a place where God satisfies his children with long life. So when God gives you riches, which is the gift of prosperity, he gives you long life. That is the power to eat it. So that you don't just die so young without having to enjoy anything of the money God gave you. There are some people they will struggle, labor hard, and work so hard only to build a house, but they will die without moving into the house to stay inside. That means it's not a gift of prosperity. We need to understand that God will never give you something that you will not use, something that is of no relevance to you. God will not give it to you. Now, God always gives us something that we can use. It is only Satan who would like to punish human beings. So at times he makes sure that we have some things that we cannot use or possess or have our way with it, enjoy life with it. You see, God created us to enjoy life. He did not create us to be so bitter in life. At times we can suffer, but the suffering is leading to the enjoyment. The gift of prosperity comes after you have suffered a while. But that suffering is for the crown, the glory. The suffering of the Christian is just for a little time. Then the glory takes over. Mm -hmm. So we're back to the same verse. There's so many things in this verse that I want us to dive into it. We're still in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 19. He said, and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the B part of it. After you have brought to eat it, you take your portion. Then it talks about rejoice in your labor. So what makes it the gift of God is it is your portion. So you need to understand that you have to take your portion of God's prosperity. You have to take your portion of God's gifts. God is releasing blessing to human beings. He created this world for us to live in. For the time being, though we live in life so that we can prepare for eternity, but we need to understand that in this world we have our portion. Okay? So the gift of prosperity will be given to the believer as a portion, as his own portion. The place that God has allotted for him. Everybody has a portion. When God took the children of Israel from Egypt into the promised land, we saw that God gave them portions. Amen. Portions of land. Everybody has his own portion. Amen. So, God gave them inheritance. That is a prosperity. Prosperity means having all sufficiency at all times. Every provision of everything that you need is given to you at all the times. So when a person is prospering, it means he's succeeding. 
He succeeds in everything that he does. When a person is prospering, it means he's making it. So, what we need to understand here is that we have a portion of God. So, that's why a Christian will not go to Jeju, will not go for Sakawa, will not go and do rituals, will not go and steal, will not go and lie or take a bribe. So you can also have money. No, you have a portion from God. Hallelujah. Amen. You have your own portion of prosperity. When you see that unbelievers are doing drugs so they can have money to build mansions or buy cars, don't follow them. You have your own portion. Amen. If you serve God enough, a time is coming, He will also bless your life Amen. so that you can have your money to build your own house Amen. and also buy your own car. Amen. That is our portion on earth. We too have a portion of dresses. We can serve God and be clothed in rags. No. God has a portion of dress for us to also wear. Mm -hmm. He did not create us to walk naked. The same way He did not create us to live outside, to sleep outside. We need to have shelter over our head. Mm -hmm. That's the reason you build a house. At the time God told the children of Israel, He said, build houses and live in it. He said, you shall build houses and dwell in it. That's part of the prosperity. So, there's nothing wrong with a Christian building a house and living inside. It's your portion. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you live in somebody's house, you are a tenant, and the person will be controlling you. You are not even free to go to church and come as late as you want, because he tells you, in my house, the gate is closed when it is 9 p.m. But if you have your own house, you can come in anytime. That's why at times God will give you your own portion of a house. Amen. That is the gift of God. Amen. Maybe that guy, he went to Juju, he used rituals, or maybe he stole the money, or maybe he killed so he could have money to build a house. You are Christian, you won't do that. Amen. You know, the reason why some people cannot serve God because they think that when they serve God, they will not have money enough to acquire the things that they want to live in this world and also do things that the people are doing. They think they can't be successful enough serving God. That's why they dare not give their life to Christ. Some people think that when you give your life to Christ, you are choosing poverty. But that's far from the truth. Jesus Christ became poor so that we through his poverty might be made what? Rich. So when I give my life to Christ, I might suffer a need for some while. At times you can be hungry for a while. At times you face through some financial crisis. But it's for a while. You see, yes. the Bible says we suffer with Christ. So that will be glorified together with him. Mm -hmm. So the Christian prosperity is a process. After you pass through hard times, times of crisis, times of affliction, times of need. Yes, at times things might be so tough and hard. But you should know that God will take you to the place of abundance. Amen. When you are living in scarcity, you should know that the next level you will be is the place of abundance. There was a period where there was no rain in Israel because the prophet of God had said there shall not be rain, Elijah. There was no rain for three and a half years. And then Elijah came to the scene and then he told Ahab, he said, I hear the sound of abundance of rain. Hallelujah. Amen. Period of no rain, but when God was bringing rain, it was abundance of rain. That is the truth. Where God is doing something new, we will have it in abundance. Amen. So as a Christian, do not look at your present situation, your present condition, and conclude that your life forever be like this. There is surely a change for your life. Actually a change. Even though there are some people who are using the shortcut, they don't use God's word. 
That's why people do all form of give your thing for money. Because they don't want to use the genuine way. But we have a portion. We have a portion. We also have a portion of prosperity. Hallelujah. Amen. So the gift of prosperity is given to us because it's our portion. Now, the word portion means it's our inheritance. Okay, when we gave our life to Christ, we were given the right to also inherit the riches of Christ. So one day it will show up. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, at times some people can be so mean and stingy to you because you are Christian. Some family members, some uncles and aunties, or even mother or father or brother or sister can decide not to help you because they see you are always praying, you are always going to church, you are serving God, and maybe they are not in support of your religious lifestyle. So at times they can be so wicked to you, so mean to you, but the truth is that God also has a plan to bless your life. Amen. He has a plan, the Bible says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. God will not watch you suffer so that they will look at you and then laugh at you. They say, what kind of God is serving that he can't feed you? Hallelujah. Oh yes. At the time the enemy wants to challenge us that far. That if we have a God in now, let that God feed us. That is why Bible says the children of Israel in the wilderness, God brought manna from heaven as food for them to show that He is a God who can feed them. Hallelujah. Amen. We have a God who can feed us. It's our portion of prosperity. So the gift of God is our portion. Then the next one in the same verse, he said, and to rejoice in his labor. We are still in the Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 19. It is he. he said to rejoice in his labor. That means the gift of prosperity for the Christian, it comes through your labor. Now the difference is that you will not labor in vain. Amen. There are some people, they labor so much, but they don't harvest. They don't harvest. When it's time for harvest, the enemy will come and take their own house. That is slavery. The children of Israel were laborers in Egypt. They labored so much to build cities. But the city they built, it was only meant for the Egyptians to live inside. They used their manual strength, their energy, their workforce to really build nine houses, nine cities. But the Egyptians were living in it. And the Israelites, they live in a very deplorable and bad situation, bad environment. They were slaves. They didn't even give them much money. They didn't pay them for their service or their labor. So that is not the gift of prosperity. When you find out that you have been working from dawn to dusk, yet at the end of the day, you have nothing to show for it. You need to pray. So that God will bless your life. Hallelujah. You know that all the years of their labor in Egypt, God rewarded them handsomely by giving them the land of Canaan. Hallelujah. Their own land. God is a great master. He doesn't just use us like that. Only He deals with patience. There are some people they rush in life. You want to get rich quick. Whatever grows fast, dies fast. Those people can get the money so quick, but they will die so quick. Leaving everything behind. So we need to understand scripture. That when God picks you, He picks you from rocks, then He takes you to riches. Hallelujah. Amen. He picks you from nobody, then He makes you a somebody. Amen. God can decide to choose a person from the dunk hole and set him among the princes. That is God for you. But God's gift of prosperity comes after labor. 
labor. Never you think that God has blessed you, so you will not labor. You will labor. But the difference is that this time you will enjoy the work of your labor. Hallelujah. Amen. You will rejoice in the work of your labor. As contrast to as contrast to when you labor and then at the end of the day, all that you get is pain, disappointment, misery, and you know, some people work so hard, but after so much work is done, they get nothing for their work. We are going to see the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 65, Isaiah chapter 65, we are going to read from verse number 20, Isaiah 65, there shall be no more things and implant of days nor an old man that have not filled his days, for the child shall die hundred years old. But the sinner being a hundred years old shall be a curse. And they shall build houses and inhabit them. And they shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Verse 22, Isaiah chapter 65. And they shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, my elect shall long endure the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bring forth for trouble, for they are the seed of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring is with them. Hallelujah. Amen. You got it? Here is talking about another aspect of the gift of prosperity. The first one is long life. Amen. Long life is a prosperity. You need to understand it. You are rich in years. Amen. There are some people, they are rich in money, but they are not rich in years. Yes. They have so much money, but they only have a few years to live. Like in Job chapter 14, verse 1, the Bible says, man born of a woman is of a few days and full of troubles. So their life is just few days, few days. That means that's how much you, you are rich, the number of your days. So if you can have so much money and you only have few days, a month, few days, with your few days, what can you accomplish? With your few days, what can you do? With your few days, what can you have? For your few days, what can be done for you? What can you be use the money to accomplish? What vision can you use the money to accomplish? For God doesn't just bless us for not. The prosperity of the believer is for a vision in God's kingdom. God will not just choose to give you money just because He wants you to wear better clothes, eat better food build nice houses, have nice cars. You can have all that, but that is not just enough for God to bless you. It's not enough reason for God to bless you. God blesses people because of the kingdom vision. People will see the way you dress. They will be attracted to you. They will like to know who you are and where is the source of your blessing. That is why you will tell them, it's my God who has blessed me this far. Because everybody wants to know the secret of the rich. They want to know what made you rich so they can follow. So if I should tell you the secret of my wealth is Jesus, and I tell you, I give you the same Jesus, Amen. it will make you rich someday. Amen. You will receive my Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important. It's important. It's important. So God wants to make you prosper so that his kingdom will be part of your life, the vision in the kingdom. So he can use you to sponsor people. He can use you to help the needy. Your kindness can draw people closer to God. There are times the way you will give money, 
the way you give clothing, the way you give shelter to people can draw them closer to God. They will come and discover God. They will come and serve God because of your giving. Because you are giving so much. You need to understand that there is nothing new in prosperity. So many people believing in this world, they are prospering. There are some people who have money that they don't have God, but they still have money. In fact, there are some people who claim to be atheist. They say there is no God, yet they have money. So prosperity is not a new thing on earth. But when God prospers you, what makes a difference is that you use your money to build the kingdom of God. You let people know that there is a God who can bless you, not just with money, but with a kingdom. Amen. What kingdom? With the kingdom of God. It is important. So you need long life. You need long life, which is part of the prosperity. Where there is no long life, there is no prosperity. So God said he is going to make sure that we need to fulfill our days. And he said, even if someone should die 100 years old, that person will even still be referred to as a child. Mm -hmm. Dies at age 100 years old, and God still sees that person as a child. But he says, if the person is a sinner, and he's 100 years old, he will be accursed. That means, 100 year old sinner, will be stricken by the age, will be so weak, times you cannot even see, times you cannot even walk, reason and stick, gradually, at times he cannot talk well, he can't eat well, he will poo poo on himself, weary on himself, go to the toilet on himself, urinate on himself, at the age of 100 there are so many old people like that. They miss at one place. That is a kind stuff. How can you be that old and you can't do anything? You go to the toilet on yourself. You urinate on yourself. You can't see everything. No, no, no. The Bible says about Moses. The Bible says Moses was about 120 years old. Even his eye was nothing. His sight was nothing. He could see clearly, and he was strong. He could walk by himself. Hallelujah. Amen. He go to the toilet by himself. He does not go to the toilet by himself. He was not sick, sick because of old age. He has strength. That is prosperity. Amen. God blesses you with old age and strength. So whilst you are still alive, you can still give commands. You can still tell people how to handle your business. You can still tell your children, your grandchildren. You can still sit them down, talk to them. You can recognize them when you see them. Yes, you're seeing this is Amma, this is Kofi, this is Adwa, hallelujah. Amen. But there are some old men, old women, at the age of 100, they can't see all these things. Somebody is, ah, who are you? Ah, who are you? They can't even recognize their own children. That is a test, right? Old age is not supposed to be a test. It's supposed to be a blessing. Amen. But when you do so much evil, God wants to punish you. He can leave you to be old. Then you suffer in your old age. You can't do anything for yourself. And then people will not even be around you to help you. That is a test, life. So God wants to bless us with old age. Amen. That I will still be strong. Caleb was 120 years. He said, I'm still strong as I am today. Amen. Both for war and to come in and go out. Hey, Amen. a man of 120 can go to war. Now Caleb said it in the Bible. That's prosperity. So God said he's going to give us long life. In Isaiah 65, verse, verse 20. Then verse 21. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. 
Remember, we are talking about the gift of prosperity. And he says, we will build houses. When we build the houses, we are going to live in those houses we built. When we build houses, nobody else will come and live in the house, but we will live in it. Hallelujah. Because God will not bless you to build a house so you die and then somebody will come and live in that house. At least you have to live in the house for a while. Hallelujah. Amen. You live in the house for some days and that. Except maybe God has blessed you abundantly and he just said build more houses for other people to also live in it. But I heard of somebody who just built a house. And then she built a house and when she built the house, she said she was doing luncheon on Saturday so she could move into the house. And uh, you know, amazingly, she was renting a house. So she finished building the house. She would land the house on Saturday. Friday night, she slept in her old house, the rented house. The house was rented. Saturday morning was supposed to be the luncheon day when she would move into a new house and then sleep comfortably. But, but, he died that Friday night. What a pain. He did not sleep in the new house. There's the house by our side. The house just by this building. So, we need to understand these things. That there are some people, they can build a house, but they don't live in it. They plant, but they don't harvest. That is a case life. But when God bless you with the gift of prosperity, Amen. you will build a house, you Amen. will dwell in it. Amen. Do you know what God expressly told the children of Israel that message? He said, they shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat the fruit of them. Because there was a scenario of satanic attack. And you see it in verse 22, Isaiah chapter 65. We are talking about the gift of prosperity. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 22. He said, They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree are the days of my people, and mine elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. Hallelujah. So you get the picture here. The Bible says, They shall build. And then you see, they shall build and live in it by themselves because. Till that time, they build houses and the enemies will come and drive them away. They become slaves and the enemies will live in the house or upon some people to dwell in their houses. Nice houses they are built. You can't demand in that time. Then, the Bible goes on to say that they will plant vineyards and eat the fruit of it by themselves. Because at that time, when they plant, during the harvest, the enemies will come and take the fruits and eat it. So, when God gives you the gift of prosperity, He gives you the power to enjoy your labor so that your struggle is not in vain. The things you work for, the things you labor for, will never be in vain. Hallelujah. There are some people like that. Your life is under a spiritual attack. All the work and labor, work and labor, somebody else will come and take over. May the Lord break that yoke in Jesus' name. Amen. So that you will enjoy the work of your hands. Amen. You will not struggle with a man. You marry the man. You struggle with him. You have nothing. And now that he has become wealthy and rich, he becomes a womanizer. Other women come now. And what is more, he wants to divorce you and marry another man. May God break that yoke in Jesus' name. Amen. God wants you to enjoy your fruits. You are planting, but you need to enjoy. You see, God's gift of prosperity comes with the natural process of planting and harvesting. It doesn't come magically. Hallelujah. Amen. May God wants to give you a gift of prosperity. It comes with reaping, sowing, and harvesting. That means 
it comes with laboring and enjoying the work of your labor. It means that it comes with working and enjoying the income, the benefits of your work. But this time around, you will not just receive exactly what you work for. You have bonuses. Hallelujah. Amen. You have over and above. Amen. What God wants is to do effort in doing something. God doesn't condone people who are lazy. They don't do anything. Yet, they're expecting God to bless them. It's nowhere in the Bible. People wept. Isaac sowed in the land, and then he had a harvest. Hallelujah. Amen. God blessed him based upon what he sowed, based upon what he planted. There are some people who want to receive God's blessings, but they don't sow seeds. There are different kinds of seeds. We have the seed of time. At times you need to spend some time before God. The time you used to go to work is good, but you need to also have a time you spend in praying, Amen. you spend in worshiping God. Hallelujah. Amen. There are some people, they use all the leisure time for entertainment, watching TV, going to watch football, going to pray, going to chat with friends, going to places of interest. Instead of coming to the house of God or spending time with God or going to wait on God, you need to sow that seed so you can harvest the blessings of God. The time you wait on God is important. Hallelujah. Amen. Then you need to sow the seed of giving tithe and offerings. When you give, according to Luke chapter 6, verse 38, Jesus said, Give and it shall come back to you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over, shall be given unto your person. That is prosperity. Hallelujah. Amen. That is the gift of prosperity that comes by giving. So you give to people, you give to God. You give your offering, you give your tithe, you also give to people outside who, who are in need of something. Or I mean, your relatives, or your friends, or people you meet that you see that they are in their need of something that you can easily give, something that you can easily provide. Hallelujah. Amen. There are times you have to even give something that can affect you as well. You've seen that you have a budget for the money. If somebody has a greater need, that you're giving it to save a life, Amen. and you do it. Hallelujah. Amen. It's important so that you can have the gift of prosperity. God wants us to have that gift so that we will use it to glorify his name. Amen. We are living in the end times. We have to spread the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And uh, we need money for the purpose. Amen. So in the house of God, God will always make sure that he will bless his children. Amen. He will give them the money so that they can be of help. Amen. They can help those who are in need. Because that is who God is. Amen. Amen. So, it's a giving, giving to the church, giving to the people, giving to the needy, giving to support people. There are times when God can bless you so that you can give scholarship to some needy children, pay their school fees everywhere, people who are in need. There are times when God can bless you so you sponsor people who are preaching the gospel. You just give them your title offerings. That's the reason for the gift of prosperity. So it comes under labor, giving, working. Because God is a God of principle. He doesn't just give it to you when you fold your hands. You have to pray and pray, and the blessing will come. Hallelujah. Amen. There are times God wants you to know the difference between the blessings of God. So there are some things that can be so tough and hard when you pray. God will just do it for you. So you will not build for another to inhabit. You will always enjoy the fruit of your labor. Why? Because God is the one blessing you. Amen. God is the one blessing you. No demon will come and take your blessing. Amen. No witchcraft power can destroy it. Amen. When the time comes and God says, this is my time, I am Amen. blessing you. 